About a month ago, while rereading the Harry Potter series for the millionth time, I started to wonder how much screen time each character got. Then I started to wonder how many times each character is mentioned in the books. And then I started to wonder how these two things compare. So I spent the last month gathering information, going through every mention of the 91 characters I chose in the books, and gathering how much screen time each character had, literally going through every movie for each character and seeing how much adds up in the editing system. It took a long time, but hopefully this will make for an interesting video. Now, how we'll be looking at their book time versus screen time. For the movies, it's obviously just how long they're on screen. And for the books, the ranking is based on how many times they were mentioned throughout the seven books. Using that data, I made two lists ranking the characters, one for the books and one for the films, and we'll compare the numbers for each one. If they rank at the same number for both lists, then their screen time and book time is perfectly balanced. If the difference between the two is in the single digits, that means their screen time and book time is pretty accurate. If it's between 10 and 19, it's not too far off, but there's definitely a difference. Then if it's between 20 and 29, their time on screen and on page isn't very close. And if it's 30 or above, then the novels and films are way off for that character. So, let's get into it. At number 91, with the least amount of screen time in the movies, we have Charlie Weasley with 4 seconds. Yeah, he only appears in this newspaper clipping, and it's pretty wild because he ranks at number 77 out of 91 for the novels, a 14 spot difference from his movie ranking. At 90, we have Colin Creevy with 1 minute of screen time. This one is also shocking because he's a big character in the books, and his death was one of the most impactful in the final novel. While he ranks at number 90 for the movies, he actually ranks at number 78 for the books, a 12 spot difference. At number 89, we have Lee Jordan, who, like Colin, had just one minute of screen time, most of which came from announcing Quidditch matches. Lee ranked at number 78 for the books, an 11 spot difference from the movies. In the book, Lee was always by Fred and George's side, which we never really saw in the films, hence why his screen time is so much lower. At 88, we have Amos Diggory with 1 minute and 30 seconds of screen time. When we compare, this one is very accurate to his time in the books, as he was number 87 for the novels, just one spot off from his 88 spot in the movies. Number 87, we have Nearly Headless Nick, who also had 1 minute and 30 seconds of screen time. This one is way off from the books, as he was number 61 overall, a 26 spot difference. Number 86 is Arabella Fig, who also had 1 minute and 30 seconds of screen time, which fits as he ranked at number 83 for the novels, just three spots off from her screen time. She was mentioned in the first book a few times, which obviously wasn't in the films, so the Order of the Phoenix was her only appearance in the movies. At 85, we have Ferenz, and another character with 1 minute and 30 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked at number 76 for the books, 9 spots higher than the films. This is because Ferenz appeared in the 5th book as the new divination teacher, but he did not appear in the 5th film. Number 84, the captain of the Slytherin Quidditch team, Marcus Flint, had 1 minute and 45 seconds of screen time, which is absolutely perfect. Both lists have him ranked at number 84, so his time on screen and on page is perfectly balanced. At number 83, we have Hermione's cat, Crookshanks, who had 1 minute and 45 seconds of screen time. I was surprised at how much screen time he had, but not nearly as shocked at how high his ranking was for the novels at number 48, a 35 spot difference from the films. Looking back though, this does make sense because he had whole arcs that were cut for the third film, like him talking and working with Sirius in his dog form, and Crookshanks of course being present for the Shrieking Shack scene. At number 82, we have Angelina Johnson, who also had 1 minute and 45 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, she ranked at number 62 overall for the books, a 20 spot difference from the movies. It's a lot closer than Crookshanks was though. Also, it's wild that Crookshanks has more screen time than Angelina. I did not expect that. At number 81, Fenrir Greyback had 1 minute and 45 seconds as well, which makes him be pretty far off from his book ranking at number 68, a 13 spot difference from the movies. This is because many of his scenes were given to other characters in the movie, specifically Scabier and the Deathly Hallows. And the last of the 1 minute and 45 second screen time characters, we have Bill Weasley at number 80. Shockingly, while he's number 80 overall for the movies, he comes in at 28 overall for the books, which is a wildly absurd 52 spot difference. This one along with Charlie Weasley's are the two most skewed so far, which is kind of sad because it means the films barely covered the two oldest Weasley boys. 
At number 79, Stan Shunpike had two minutes of screen time, which made him rank just six spots back from his book counterpart at number 73. He was mentioned more in the novels past his time in the Prisoner of Azkaban, as he was in the fourth book during the Quidditch World Cup, and was arrested and turned into a Death Eater thanks to the Imperious Curse in the sixth and seventh books, which made his mentions go up a lot more. Number 78 is Yaxley, who had two minutes of screen time, all of which took place in the Deathly Hallows Part 1. This matches up pretty well with his book ranking at number 82 overall in the books, meaning there's a four spot difference in favor of the films, and that's the first time we've seen a character have more screen time than book time. Number 77 is Pomona Sprout, who had two minutes of screen time as well. Sprout only spoke in the second movie and barely did anything except stand in the background in Deathly Hallows Part 2. This is very different from her book counterpart, who appeared in all seven books, making her rank at the number 66 spot for the books, meaning there is an 11 spot difference from book to movie. At number 76, we have Poppy Pomfrey, who was on screen for 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Meanwhile, she ranked at number 50 overall for the novels, which is a 26 spot difference, a massive jump. At number 75, we have James Potter, who also had 2 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked all the way up to number 40 for the novels. This is a massive 35 spot difference. Even though he was dead for the entire series, he still had more screen time than a lot of other people, most notably Bill and Charlie Weasley. Number 74 is Cormac McLaggen with 2 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. In the books, he ranked at number 79, which is only 5 spots back from the films, making him the second character who has a higher movie ranking than a book ranking. Number 73 is Blaze Zabini, who had 2 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time, which is jarring compared to his number 85 book ranking. In the books, he is the 7th lowest character, which gives us a 12 spot difference in favor of the films. Looking at the data, this obviously shows that Blaze appeared far more in the movie than in the book, and this is due to the fact that Blaze's character took Crab's spot in the Room of Requirement scene in the final film, as the actor for Crab got into some legal trouble and could not participate in the final two movies. Number 72 was Rufus Scrimger with 2 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. He only appeared in the 7th film, while he actually appeared in both the 6th and 7th book, and was mentioned in the 5th book, which brought his book ranking up to number 52, which is a 20 spot difference from the films. At number 71, we have Katie Bell, who had 2 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. She was actually in all 7 books, which brought her book ranking up to number 67, a 4 spot difference. At number 70, we have Marge Dursley, who had 2 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. She was actually much lower in the book ranking than the film ranking. In the novels, she was number 81 overall, which is 11 spots back from her ranking in the films, which was number 70. At number 69, we have Moaning Myrtle, who had 2 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, she ranked at number 63 for the novels, meaning there is a 6 spot difference from book to movie. Number 68 is Mundungus Fletcher, who had just 3 minutes of screen time, appearing in only the 7th movie. Meanwhile, he was in the 5th, 6th, and 7th books. This made him rank at number 57 for the novels, which is an 11 spot difference from his movie ranking. At number 67, we have Nigel, who had 3 minutes of screen time, and this one is going to be the craziest stat in the video. Nigel had 3 minutes of screen time versus 0 book mentions. Yeah, Nigel wasn't in the books. He was made just for the movie, sort of replacing Colin Creevy and his brother Dennis. This obviously makes him ranked last at number 91 for the books, which is a 24 spot difference from book to movie. At number 66, Creature had 3 minutes of screen time, which is very far off from his number 29 book ranking, a huge 37 spot difference. He had a lot more to do in the novels, as he played a huge part in the kids going to the Ministry of Magic in the 5th book, Tricking Harry, then becoming Harry's house elf, and starting work at Hogwarts in the 6th book, and he of course took care of the trio and told them about Creature's Tale in the 7th book. So it makes sense why there's such a drastic change from book to movie. At number 65, we have Fox the Phoenix, who had 3 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, which actually puts him way higher in the movies than in the books. In the books, he's all the way back at number 80, meaning he's 15 spots ahead in the films. Number 64 is a Limp Maxime, who had 3 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. For the books though, she's 6 spots back at number 70, meaning she had more movie time than time in the books. Moving from one headmaster to another, we have Igor Karkaroff at number 63, who had the exact same amount of screen time as Maxime, with 3 minutes and 15 seconds. Then, he ranked at number 51 for the books, meaning he had a 12 spot difference from book to movie. 
Number 62 is Nagini, who had 3 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. This is way off from the books, as she had the 6th lowest ranking for the novels at number 86, which is a 24 spot difference in favor of the films. At number 61, Scabier had 3 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time, which is way off from the books, where he had the second lowest ranking. Only Nigel, a character who wasn't in the novels, being behind him. This means that Scabier has a 29 spot difference from book to film. This is because most of his lines were actually taken from Greyback and given to him. The movies for some reason decided to highlight Scabier far more, which was a decision that always made me want to know why. Greyback is one of the most terrifying villains in the entire series, and to be honest, I wish we saw more of him in the films. Number 60 is Aberforth Dumbledore, who had 3 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked at number 74 overall for the novels, which is a 14 spot difference in favor of the movies. This is mostly due to the films giving him a big moment in the final battle as he cast the Patronus charm to save the trio, which added close to 30 seconds to his screen time. In the book though, this was Seamus, Luna, and Ernie McMillan. Aberforth was not there for that. At number 59, we have Lily Potter, who had 3 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, while she landed at number 54 for the books, meaning there's just a 5 spot difference when comparing the two, so this one is pretty accurate. Taking a deeper look at this, this ranking is wild for two reasons. One, she has an entire minute and 15 seconds more screen time than James, but is 14 spots lower than him for the novel's ranking. And the second crazy thing is that a character who was dead for the entire series has more screen time than so many notable characters that had pretty large roles in the series. Number 58 is even wilder though, as Fang had 3 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time, meaning a dog had more time than many big characters. To be fair though, he ranked all the way up at number 59 for the book, so it adds up and is pretty close to being perfect, as his book time and screen time was just one ranking off in favor of the films. At 57, we have Rita Skeeter, who only had 3 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time, and her movie ranking is way back from her book ranking at number 34, meaning there is a 23 spot difference. This is because she only appeared in one film while she was in or mentioned in four of the books. At number 56, we have Mad Eye Moody, who only had 3 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time, but is 18 overall for the books, meaning this is one of the most skewed outcomes, having a 38 spot difference. However, this one is sort of messed up because many of his mentions weren't about him, but were about Barty Crouch Jr. impersonating him. And on top of that, he obviously was not credited for his time in the Goblet of Fire film because all of that went to Barty Crouch Jr. But nonetheless, Moody had much more to do in the books as he was a huge part of the fifth book, going to parties at the Order headquarters, showing Harry that old picture of the Order, which Sirius did in the film, and taking everyone to St. Mungo's, all of which was cut from the movie. At number 55 is Kingsley Shacklebolt, who was the first character to breach 4 minutes, having 4 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he's 16 spots back for the books at number 71. I was actually pretty shocked by both of these numbers. I thought his screen time would be way less than this, and I thought his book ranking would be way more, but I guess he played a smaller part in the books than I remembered. At number 54, Oliver Wood had 4 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time, which is the same as Kingsley, but Oliver ranks 25 spots higher than Kingsley for the books, coming in at number 46. This also means there's an 8 spot difference from novel to film for Oliver in favor of the books, which makes sense because they cut a lot of his scenes from the movies, including him finally winning the House Cup in the third book. At number 53, we have Padma Patel, who had 4 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, she actually had has the third lowest ranking for the books at number 89 out of 91. That's a 36 spot difference in favor of the movies. Meanwhile, at number 52, we have Pravati Patel, who actually has the same amount of screen time as Padma at 4 minutes and 45 seconds, but is 29 spots higher for Padma for their book ranking, coming in at number 60. This is because both twins were in Gryffindor in the films, but in the book, Pravati was in Gryffindor while Padma was in Ravenclaw. In the novels, Pravati wasn't paired with Padma, but rather with her best friend Lavender. What's interesting is that Padma, the character with with the third lowest book ranking was the only Patil twin to be in the final battle, despite the fact that it was Parvati who played a big role here. They even had Padma laying Lavender to rest when they weren't really friends, that was her sister's best friend, not hers. Despite that though, the twin screen time evens out to be equal because Parvati had more scenes than Padma did at the Yule Ball. But looking at just Parvati, she actually ranks higher for screen time than book time as she was listed at the number 60 spot for the novels, which is 8 spots less than her film ranking. 
At 51, we have Xenophilius Lovegood, who was the first character to hit 5 minutes of screen time, having exactly 5 minutes on the die. This is crazy, because his book ranking is all the way back at number 72 for the novels, meaning there's a 21 spot difference in favor of the films. Number 50 is Nymphadora Tonks, who only had 5 minutes of screen time, which is shocking when looking at her number 38 book ranking, a 12 spot difference. This is because she played a huge part in the 5th, 6th, and 7th books, most of which was cut from the movies. At number 49, like Tonks, Sybil Trelawney had 5 minutes of screen time, and again, like Tonks, Trelawney had many more book moments than movie moments, as she ranked at number 35 overall for the novels, which is 14 spots higher than the film ranking. At number 48, we have Percy Weasley, who only had 5 minutes of screen time, but has the second highest book ranking so far at number 25. But here he is, all the way down at number 48, a 23 spot difference. This is due to the fact that he was left out of 3 of the 8 movies, not appearing in the 4th, 6th, or 7th films, and barely had anything to do in the films he was in. He was not cut as much as Bill or Charlie, but I definitely see a theme of the Weasley brothers being cut from the films. At 47, we have Victor Crumb, who had 5 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked 10 spots higher for the novels at number 37. This was probably due to him appearing in the Deathly Hallows book during the wedding, which he did not do in the film. Though, there are some deleted scenes photos of him there, but they never made it into the official deleted scenes compilation that came with the extras in the movies. Phileas Flitwick is at number 46 with 5 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, which is about what I thought it would be, but I was shocked at what his book ranking was. He ranked all the way back at number 56 for the books, meaning he actually ranks 10 spots higher for screen time than he did for book time, which I did not expect. At number 45, we have Barty Crouch Sr., who had 5 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, which is very low considering he has the third highest book ranking so far at number 27. That's an 18 spot difference in favor of the books. This is because he was very prominent at the Quidditch World Cup as well as the Triwizard Tournament, and his family sort of drove the whole mystery aspect of the fourth book, but unfortunately, almost all of that was cut from the movie, hence the low screen time when compared to his book mentions. At 44, we have Lavender Brown, who had 5 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. Interestingly, even though she was in all 7 books, she ranks higher for the movies than the books, as she came in at number 53 for the books, 9 spots lower than a rank for the films. Number 43 is the first character to hit the 6 minute mark, and it will probably shock you who it is. Hedwig the Owl had 6 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, meaning she has more scenes than Moody, Flitwick, Percy, Tonks, Wood, and 49 other characters. What's even wilder is that this is perfectly accurate to the books, as she was ranked at 43 for both the novels and the films, so that's two so far that have matched up perfectly. At 42, we have Vincent Crabb, who had 6 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. As I said earlier, he was cut from the final two films due to the actor's legal troubles, but despite this, he ranked only one spot higher in the books than he did in the films at number 41. So that was pretty accurate, and I'll talk more about Crab when we get to Goyle's character. Number 41 is Fleur Delacour, who had 6 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, she ranked at number 33 for the novels, an 8 spot difference. I was surprised at how much screen time she had, but I guess it makes sense since she played such a large role in the 4th film, as well as the opening of the 7th and 8th films. She obviously had a lot more book mentions though, as she appeared in the Half-Blood Prince novel, but was not in the Half-Blood Prince film. At number 40, we have Narcissa Malfoy, who had 6 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time, which is very high when looking at her book ranking, which is all the way back at number 75. This gives us a 35 spot difference in favor of the films. To put that into perspective, looking at the 52 characters that came before her for screen time, she has a lower book ranking than 37 of them. At number 39, we have Cho Chang, who had 6 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, she ranks at number 45 for the books, a 6 spot difference in favor of the films, which we're seeing a lot of with these mid-range characters on the list. They have more screen time than book time. Number 38 is Dean Thomas, who also had 6 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. It's sort of funny that the two people that Harry and Ginny dated before getting together have the same amount of screen time in the films. Like many of the other mid-range characters, Dean actually ranks 4 spots higher for the films than for the books, as he comes in at number 42 for the novels. At number 37, we have Quirinus Quirrell, who was the first to reach 7 minutes of screen time, having exactly that, 7 minutes. Meanwhile, he ranked all the way back to number 65 for the novels, a 28 spot difference from book to movie. 
Number 36 is Garrick Ollivander, who had 7 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Then for his book ranking, he comes in at number 64, a huge 28 spot difference in favor of the movies, which I did not expect. He wasn't in that many scenes, but I guess the scenes he was in were pretty long. At 35, we have Griphook, who also had 7 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Which again is funny, as the two characters that helped Harry during his first time in the Wizarding World, as well as the two characters that he spoke to at the beginning of the 8th movie, both have the exact same amount of screen time. Griphook was 9 spots higher for the book ranking though, at number 55. Also, Griphook's screen time ranking versus his book ranking was 20 spots higher in favor of the films. At number 34, we have Gregory Goyle, who had 7 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time, which is a minute and a half more screen time than Crab, despite him being just 2 spots behind Crab on the book ranking. This is because, as I said earlier, Crab was replaced by Blaze in the final book. Although, Crab also had some scenes that Goyle didn't appear in during the third film, but looking at the timestamps, the Room of Requirement battle was longer, even when those two scenes from the third film are combined. But Goyle ranked at number 39 for the novels, which is only a 5 spot difference from his film ranking in favor of the books. Number 33 is Buckbeak, who was the first character to reach the 8 minute mark, with exactly 8 minutes of screen time. This one was surprising for me, but those flying scenes did take up a lot of time, this one alone taking up over 2 minutes. Buckbeak's screen time outdid his book time, as he ranked at number 58 for the books, 25 spots lower than his movie ranking. At 32, we have Argus Filch, who had 8 minutes of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked at number 31 for the novels, meaning there is only a 1 spot difference from book to movie in favor of the novels. Number 31 is Cedric Diggory, who had 8 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, all of which came from the 4th film besides that one dream sequence in the 5th film. Meanwhile, he ranked at number 32 for the books, which again gives us just a 1 spot difference in favor of the films. At number 30, Petunia Dursley had 8 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, having the least of the three Dursleys. Meanwhile, she ranked at number 30 overall for the books, meaning we have our third perfect match. She's ranked at number 30 for both screen time and book time. At 29, we had Peter Pettigrew, who had 8 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. And he has the highest book ranking we've seen so far at number 23, which is a 6 spot difference in favor of the books. At number 28, we have the first character to hit the 9 minute mark, as Cornelius Fudge had 9 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked at number 20 overall for the books, an 8 spot difference in favor of the novels. Number 27 is Dudley Dursley, who had 9 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. And for his book ranking, he's 5 spots back at number 22 overall for the novels. Also, he has 1 minute and 30 seconds more screen time than his mother Petunia, but was ranked 8 spots higher than her for book time. At number 26, we have Seamus Finnegan, who had 9 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time, which is wild considering he ranked all the way back at number 47 for the books, giving his screen time a 21 spot advantage. Number 25 is Molly Weasley, who also had 9 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time, but has the highest book ranking we've seen so far by a long shot at number 15, 10 spots up from where she is in the movies. This obviously makes sense, as Molly played a much larger role in pretty much every book when compared to the films. At number 24, we have Bellatrix Lestrange, who was the first to crack the 10 minute mark, having 10 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. This is jarring compared to her book ranking, which was all the way back at number 44, 20 spots back from her movie ranking. This is because the films added many Bellatrix scenes that weren't in the book, like the Burrow scene, and they also added her to the Battle of the Astronomy Tower, which she was not there for in the novels. But hey, I would milk Helena Bottom Carter too, because she steals every scene she's in. At 23, we have Gilderoy Lockhart with 10 minutes and 30 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, his book ranking was 13 spots back from his movie ranking, going all the way down to number 36 for the novels. This surprised me considering he was only in one film, but was in two different books. At number 22, we have the first character to hit 11 minutes of screen time, as Vernon Dursley had exactly 11 minutes on screen. Then Vernon is ranked 19th overall for the novels, which is a 3 spot advantage to his time in the films, a pretty even ranking. Also, Vernon had 2 minutes and 45 seconds more screen time than Petunia, and 1 minute and 15 seconds more screen time than Dudley, and the order for screen time for the Dursleys adds up when looking at the order for the book rankings as well, as Vernon is 3 spots higher than Dudley in the book, and 11 spots higher than Petunia. Number 21 is Dobby, who had 11 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, which actually evens out perfectly with his book ranking, because he's number 21 overall for both the books and the films, and is our 4th perfect match. 
much. We have a big jump of time for this next one, going from just over 11 minutes to just over 15 minutes, as Lucius Malfoy takes the number 20 spot for the most screen time. This is wild, because he ranked all the way back at the number 49 spot for the books, which is a 29 spot difference. At number 19, we have Arthur Weasley, who had 15 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. He had more time in the novels, however, as he ranked 14th overall for the books, meaning there's a 5-spot difference between the two mediums. I was actually pretty surprised that Mr. Weasley ranked higher than Mrs. Weasley for both the books and the films, having 6 minutes more screen time and being 1 spot ahead of her for the books. Number 18 is Dolores Umbridge, who had 16 minutes of screen time. This is very accurate to her book ranking, which landed her at number 17 overall for the novels, which is just a one spot difference in favor of the books, so her screen time and movie time was pretty accurate. At number 17, Barty Crouch Jr. had 16 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, which is so far off from his time in the books, as he ranked as the 4th lowest at number 88, giving us a crazy 71 spot difference. This is the biggest gap in the video, but again, this is sort of messed up by the fact that he was secretly moody for the entire fourth book, which counted as screen time, but did not count as mentions because they called him moody. So I'd say that Bill still has the biggest gap with 52 spots. Number 16 is Luna Lovegood, who had 17 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Her movie ranking outdoes her book ranking though, as she came in at number 26 overall for the novels, 10 spots back compared to the films. This is because, like Bellatrix, the films did a lot more with Luna, putting her in scenes that she wasn't in for the books, like rescuing Harry from the train, or being the one to show Harry Thestrals. At number 15, Horace Slughorn had 18 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time, which is 9 spots ahead of his book ranking at number 24 overall. Both of these were way higher than I would have thought. To have that high of a movie and book ranking when only being introduced in the second to last installment is pretty wild. It really shows how big of a role he played in the Half-Blood Prince, because he barely did anything in the 7th and 8th films nor the 7th book. At number 14, we have Fred Weasley, who had 19 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked 5 spots ahead for the book ranking at number 9, making him the first character to be in the top 10 for either list. And going from one Weasley twin to another, George comes in at number 13, having 20 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time, the first to break the 20 minute mark. George actually has 30 seconds more screen time than Fred, which is all to do with the scene where George walked in on Harry and Ginny kissing. Despite having more screen time than Fred though, he's actually 3 spots lower than Fred when it comes to the book ranking, coming in at number 12. George's screen time compared to his book time is pretty accurate though, as there's only a 1 spot difference in favor of the books. At number 12, we have Sirius Black, which is fitting as he grew up at number 12, Grimwald Place. He had 20 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked at number 8 overall for the books, a 4 spot difference in favor of the novels. At number 11, we take a big jump in time, going from 20 minutes to 26 minutes, as Remus Lupin had exactly 26 minutes of screen time. Meanwhile, he ranked at number 10 overall for the books, which again gives us a 1 spot difference in favor of the novels. It's interesting that Lupin has almost 6 minutes more screen time than Sirius, but is ranked 2 spots behind him for the books. And now we reach the top 10. Neville Longbottom had 28 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, he was ranked at number 11 overall for the books, just a 1 spot difference in favor of the films. At number 9, Minerva McGonagall had 28 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time, which is actually pretty far off from her book ranking, which landed her 7 spots back at number 16. Clearly, the films utilized McGonagall more than the books did at times, like when she was the one to tell the class about the Chamber of Secrets, which Professor Binns did in the books, and they of course added much more of a focus on McGonagall for the final battle. I don't think anybody will complain though. Maggie Smith is a gem. The more we get of her, the better. At number 8, Ginny Weasley is the first character to hit 30 minutes, as she had 30 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. Considering how much screen time she had, she's ranked pretty low for the books, being all the way back at number 13, which is a 5 spot difference in favor of the films. Number 7 is Draco Malfoy, who had 31 minutes and 45 seconds of screen time, and he was actually the inspiration for this video after Tom Felton's comments about his screen time versus his salary. As little as 31 minutes seems though, he's still the 7th most used character in the series, so he does deserve the big bucks. His screen time was also perfectly proportional to his time in the novels, because he ranks at number 7 for both the books and the movies.
At number 6, we have Lord Voldemort slash Tom Riddle, who had 37 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. And I did a little extra research, finding out that 14 minutes and 30 seconds of that was Tom Riddle flashbacks. Meanwhile, Voldemort ranked as the 6th most used character in the books, which again gives us a perfect match from book to movie. Voldemort is number 6 for both, and we have 2 perfect matches in a row. Number 5. Severus Snape had 43 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time. And we have another perfect match, being ranked at number 5 for both the books and the movies. Number 4 has a drastic jump in time going from just over 43 minutes to 77 minutes and 15 seconds or 1 hour 17 minutes and 15 seconds. And this was none other than Albus Dumbledore. In the books, he ranks at number 4 overall, which again matches up with the amount he was used in the films and is the 4th perfect match in a row. At number 3, Hermione Granger had 205 minutes of screen time or 3 hours and 25 minutes. And this again matches up perfectly with the book, as she ranked at number 3 for the books as well, giving us 5 perfect matches in a row. Number 2 was Ron Weasley, who had 211 minutes and 45 seconds, or 3 hours 31 minutes and 45 seconds. Interestingly, this is over 6 minutes more screen time than Hermione had. Also, this again matches up perfectly with the amount he was utilized in the books, because he was ranked at number 2 overall for both the books and the movies, giving us 6 perfect matches in a row. And it looks like we'll finish off with 7 perfect matches in a row, as number 1 is Harry Potter, who appeared on screen for 539 minutes and 15 seconds, or 8 hours, 59 minutes, and 15 seconds, and he ranked at number 1 for both screen time and book time. Looking at the two ends of the spectrum, we have 11 perfect matches, 7 of which took place in the top 7. Flint, Hedwig, Petunia, Dobby, Draco, Voldemort, Snape, Dumbledore, Hermione, Ron, and Harry. Meaning the filmmakers did a great job when matching up their screen time with their book counterparts. And on the other end, besides Barty Jr's skewed numbers due to the impersonation, Bill Weasley has the biggest difference from book to film, as his screen time is 52 spots back from his time in the books. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It took me over a month to do all of the research, but it was a lot of fun to make, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Shout out to my fiance Kara, who does stuff like this for a living as an analyst. She was a big help when crunching the numbers. But that's all I have for you in this video, so I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.